Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those that are, uh, you know, free in the, um, you know, other states except Victoria, you know, uh, hope you're uh, making the most of it. Um, yeah. Welcome to the uh, the webinar uh, about passwordless uh, from Entrust, um, particularly their identity as a service uh, platform. Uh, both Nathan and I are in Victoria, so we're uh, we're, we're inside uh, lockdown, being safe. Um, but uh, really want to bring this uh, this to you. This is a, a presentation which I saw a few few months ago, uh, and it really uh, opened my eyes about uh, you know where password can be used, what passwordless actually means. You know, there's it's not just uh, you know, there's lots of ways of implementing it and, and getting results from it. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'll uh, introduce Nathan from Entrust. He's uh, one of the technical uh, sales executives. Uh, and um, yeah, he's going to chat to you about the, uh, about the, uh, the Entrust platform. Um, at the end, um, we, will, uh, we will have a, uh, uh, some Q&A, we'll have a poll as well. Um, and then we'll run through some of the current promotions out there that are, that are available to, uh, to partners and uh, uh, fair for you to uh, uh, enjoy um, the fruits of uh, Entrust. Um, Nathan, would you please uh, kick it off. Terrific. Thanks for the lovely introduction, Matt. As Matt mentioned, uh, my name's Nathan from Entrust. Unfortunately, here in Victoria, so um, doing this from my lovely house rather than the office where I'd rather be at the moment. Um, but let's uh, get started on a parcelless future um, powered by Entrust Identity as a Service, as Matt mentioned. So we, what we'll be covering today, so first I want to set the context of passless authentication. We'll go through the different options that we can um, go through, different deployment methods that Matt mentioned, um, show our high assurance passless solution, um, explore the extended use cases that we can cover as well, and then go through a couple of industry use cases um, that we think are highly beneficial for you all. So setting the context, um, 2020, as we all know now, 2021, um, it's been a turning point with with COVID-19, not only changing our lives, but also, you know, accelerating that digital transformation, um, sometimes up to five years as a report by Twilio last year. Um, so cloud services, they got a massive, massive shot in the arm um, with the world going digital last year, be it with communications, file sharing, or even performing transactions. Um, all physical mediums were discarded and everyone, you know, went they're all stuck at home, they all went digital. So, you know, with cloud services, according to a survey, AWS saw 29% higher revenue, Google 43% rise, and Microsoft 30% revenue growth. So that's a massive shot in the arm. The second most impacted area, IoT, so from healthcare, um, equipment based on um, IoT like surgical robots, insulin pups, pumps all the way up to everyday wearables like smartwatches, smartphones, um, large amounts of data needs to be protected, needs to be processed. Mobile is another interesting um, aspect that we come across all the time. So smartphones, they've powered into our lives and mobility has increased the utilization of not only all of these enterprise services, but regular consumers also heavily rely on mobile to conduct their transactions nowadays. Okay, but with all this tremendous growth, there's also security challenges, you know, such as lack of visibility. So applications, they're being built for the cloud nowadays, but the enterprise landscape isn't quite moved, hasn't quite fully moved across yet. Um, so we've got that mix of on-premise and cloud. So we need that single pane of glass, uh, which is where IDAS comes into it you know, that extended banded attack surface. So with employees all working from home, um, you know, there's that many unprotected personal devices joining the corporate network. Um, it really intensifies that threat landscape. So with multiple types of attacks, risks related to them, um, passwords are 100% the weakest barrier in this. Um, you know, there's simple attacks like keylogger attacks where, you know, a hacker records all the keystrokes and no credentials. Um, I'm not going to go through every single attack against password here, uh, but probably the biggest um, attack against password, I'm sure we're all aware of it, um, is a phishing attack. So the type of social engineering attack where the user dupes the user into opening the communication, typically an email, can be an instant message, can be a text. Um, and as per, as per Verizon's data breach, um, report last year, 
phishing attacks relates to 80% of all cyber attacks. So not just attacks against passwords, attacks against all cyber attacks. So the only right way to stop these attacks is to introduce multi-factor authentication with single sign-on using passwordless options. So I've set the scenes of you know, attacks against password, but why should we go passwordless? Well, as I mentioned, 80% of breach, breaches worldwide, their passwords. You know, they involve a password in any way, shape or form. You know, password resets, it's expensive. You know, 50% of all IT support calls all password related. We can lower that burden on an IT help desk um, by introducing touchless passwordless authentication. And important to note that, um, you know, the change in behavior, people are willing to invest in passwordless technologies um, because they've seen this poor user experience of having to change your password every 60 to 90 days. So some qualifying questions, um, always good to get the ball rolling a little bit, is, um, you know, for passwordless for a workforce, you know, asking people, are you tired of remember, having to remember all your uh, multiple passwords? Is your help desk inundated with calls to reset these passwords? Just some simple um, thought-provoking questions to get the conversation going. And for consumers, you know, are your consumers still using passwords to log into your applications? You know, is there a burden on them? Is there cause to your help desk? Um, you know, do, how how much do you invest in resetting passwords for your consumers? Um, I know for many of our customers, especially on the banking side of things, they um, have expressed having to reset passwords as a massive burden on their IT support team. So. We have multiple passwordless solutions, as Matt and I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, but they're not all equal. So starting from the left-hand side, we have mobile push authentication. Um, so user tries to log into their desktop, they'll select mobile push, and basically what's happening is we're caching the password in the background. So there's still a password, but we're just caching that password. And there's, um, you know, there's still that second factor, but the user has to type in their username into the laptop and then perform the push. Fire authentication in the middle, so the little Yubi keys, great devices, awesome devices. They're unbranded, um, they're small, you know, you plug them in and you just touch them and it lets you in. Cons, limitations of them, they're not all biometric enabled. Um, a lot of people just leave them plugged into their laptop for convenience. Um, so convenience is key in every security um, architectural um, environment. So people do just click on, you know, you can go to the bathroom, I can come up and log into your laptop by just clicking your FIDO key. And leads us to a higher assurance and increased productivity passless option, which is credential-based authentication um, or certificate-based authentication. We call it interchangeably both. Um, the whole premise is that you're authenticating via a mobile device, via certificate. So you're not actually typing anything in to your workstation, which I'll go through in more detail later on. So specifically to mobile push, um, it is a password replacement because push notifications are sent in lieu of entering the password. But as that little asterisk mentions, it doesn't eliminate passwords. All it's doing is caching that password in the background and we're replacing it with a push notification. Um, so biometrics enabled, you know, so it's user convenience, most widely used method for authentication across user segments. It's out of band, so you're not just using one communication channel to authenticate, um, and it's all done in real time. So there's a lot of great benefits to mobile push. It's low cost, it's easy to implement but it's not quite as high assurance, but it is an option that we do have an offer and it's widely deployed today. Um, for FIDO specific, um, you know, implement single sign-on, um, supports Windows Hello for Business, which many um, people are using. Um, it's easy to deploy, it's convenient most importantly. So um, using built-in methods like the fingerprint readers, cameras or external authenticators like your FIDO, keys, which is in this instance here. 
um, helps protect against phishing attacks, man in the middle attacks, and so forth, and um, facilitates compliance standards, which is quite important. So the issues of it is because they're unbranded, you can't prove the possession of it, they're expensive, and to manage it, it's quite complex because um, you might need to reprogram them and so forth. Our certificate-based authentication or credential-based authentication, as I mentioned, they're interchangeable. Um, it's higher assurance, so we're protecting not only the identity, but we're also performing the device authentication based upon public key infrastructure. So based upon a trusted security authority um, stored in the, in, on your enterprise. Um, you know, the cost benefit, it's, you know, if you're using it with an existing PKI, if you're using our PKI as a service bundle, um, the costs really aren't that high and you're getting the PKI and an authentication solution as well. So very high level table um, comparing two of the very predominant um, authentication methods or password lists, which is certificate credential based authentication versus FIDO. Key things to take away, um, so biometric unlock, very few FIDO keys available um, that actually do the biometric unlock. Um, it's not mobile centric, so it's all key based and it's not a smart card. Um, so the, these standards can be applied to mobile smart cards, um, which is what we do with the credential based authentication, but it's important to know that it isn't as high assurance and meaning it is not non-repudiation. So non-repudiation meaning it will stand up in a court of law. So Windows Hello for Business. Um, there are some limitations to Windows Hello for Business. Namely, you can't extend the use cases into PKI use cases, such as documented email sign-in, um, email and file encryption, and most importantly for shared workstations. Um, it only works on Windows 10 PCs won't work on Mac OS. Um, so if you've got a enterprise with multiple deployment, you can only protect the Windows machines there. So that 10% of Mac OS you can't protect. So how can we help Windows Hello for Business? Well, we can integrate with it. So we can bring in more security for Windows Hello for Business by adding that authentication, um, which can be used as a second factor. So Windows Hello for Business is the second factor and where the um, first fact that you can multiple authentications um, in that aspect. So here we share the different messaging, we convey the different levels of leadership within an organization. Um, it's important to understand your audience and sell to that audience. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. I don't wanna read off the slides um, because as upon, upon request, um, our friendly team at Blue Chip will make this slide available to anyone on this call. Um, so you can go out there and go speak to the right, um, convey the right message to the right audience. Um, but the key messages to take away on where we win is we work on both Windows and Mac OS. Um, so we covered a large majority of enterprises out there. We're high assurance and we can extend use cases far beyond just simple authentication and identity and access management. So this leads us to the high assurance um, passless access for workforce. So high assurance credentials, they're based on digital certificates issued on the device using the C, um, certificate authority of choice. Um, so as I mentioned, they're all managed by public key infrastructure. Our solution is completely CA agnostic, which means it can be used on any issuing um, authority whether it is our out-of-box integration, which is Microsoft and Entrust. So out-of-box, we support Microsoft and of course our Entrust CA product set. Um, however, if you don't have a Microsoft or Entrust CA, we'll still work with you. We might just have to leverage upon professional services or inbuilt professional services from um, your organization. So we use rich APIs to drive the credential issuance, um, which means that you know these APIs can be used to help integrate the security solution into your platforms, portals, applications. We have pre-built SDK for mobile, which is easy to use and it's a low code solution for deployment. Um, we can also offer identity proofing for the verification of users at the start of this whole onboarding process. 
So that will first validate the identity of the user by performing checks on their government issued IDs, um, like their mobile driver's license, um, their physical ID cards and so forth. So their scan by the mobile, face ID, a picture of the face is taken, face recognition, liveness detection test, it's all built into one um, know your consumer, electronic know your consumer platform. So Entrust for credential based authentication, passless solutions, we've been providing passless solutions for more than seven, eight years now. Um, we're innovators in this high assurance parcel solution. We can do a truly end-to-end -end, um, solution on this segment. Um, as explained earlier, high assurance essentially means the use of PKI for issuing digital certificates um, on user personal devices such, such as smartphones can be BYOD or corporate issued. Um, and the benefits of this solution is creating that whole trusted digital identity. It's highly scalable as it can be deployed on mobile. There's no passwords as they're eliminated from the authentication process. And the solution doesn't add cost or complexity to the existing environment. So we will work with multiple applications and integrate with your existing application base. You don't need to throw the, the baby out with the bathwater as we like to say um, here. So I've sp spoken a lot about the benefits, but how exactly does it work? So credential-based passless access um, provisions a digital certificate onto the worker's phone um, via an application that we've got, which is called Mobile Smart Credentials. Um, and that will help transform them into a trusted workforce identity. So what's going to happen due to Bluetooth and NFC capabilities? Um, as a user walks towards their workstation, um, whether it be Windows or Mac OS, a connection is established between the mobile device where the smart credential resides on it and the desktop. So it's an auto connection. You don't type anything into your workstation. You don't have to type in your username. As you come into proximity, it can auto connect to your, your device. And from there, you know, there can be multiple options to passwordlessly logging in. So first option is either the system gets unlocked when the user is asked to provide their fingerprint face ID on their smartphone um, or a pin fallback or the desktop user, the desktop promote um, prompts the user to enter a pin on the desktop. Um, and because we, because we have the identity as a service, we tie it in with that. So we're not only authenticating into the Windows or Mac OS, we're also authenticating into a remote desktop session, um, a secure shell session, and um, all of your single sign-on applications at the same time. So it's one authentication, um, and you're authenticating to everything. As you walk away from your workstation, it will lock or log out your workstation. So there's proximity-based login and log off. Um, so we've got a marketing video which shows all of this. So let me just uh, play this for a second. And hopefully you can, uh, this works and you can hear some audio. Okay. When your passwordless solution is this seamless, it makes everything else just as easy. Give your workforce a touchless login experience. Single sign-on to everything. One device for all logins. Mac and PC integration. As seamless as you can be. Passwordless for trusted workplace identities from Entrust. Great. I hope we were all able to see that. Um, so yeah, it's a highlight in that um, one use case I didn't actually mention. It also can be used for building access as well. So there's multiple, multiple use cases. Basically, anything you can think and envision will be able to achieve. So probably the biggest um, case study um, that we have out there is the NHS in the UK. Um, so the NHS, they as you know, they have more than 200 hospitals covering 150,000 doctors and 320,000 nurses. Um, 
So they reached out to what they've always wanted our passless solutions. It's always been a um, topic of hot debate. Um, you know, it was just always one of those things. As soon as the height of COVID happened, uh, April last year, they actually reached out to us and said, do a POC. We did a POC in two to three weeks. Um, two weeks after that, they were full deployment, 100% deployment out there. Um, so the way they've done it is to establish their trust, they enroll the user, um, they provision and activate the digital certificate on their mobile. Um, they then pair the device to a computer and then to be able to transact um, as they come into Bluetooth proximity range of their workstation, because they can't take off their PPE, um, their workstation prompts them for a pin and it gives them access to all of their healthcare systems as they roam around. So as they leave one workstation and walk up to another workstation, it locks their workstation and you know that session is stored in memory as they go up to another terminal server. Um, now, I'll just show you some of the extended parcelless use cases, which I've mentioned a lot. So all the PKI use cases, um, email sign-in and encryption. So smart credentials are mobile, mobile that can be used to encrypt emails using a email certificate uh, for sending it securely over the internet. This is the flow of how it works. Um, so automatically, as you go to send an email, it will digitally sign and encrypt the plain text email data using an asymmetric encryption public key. So no one can read this email in transit, it is non-repudiation. Um, once the recipient opens the email, they can then, you know, it's digitally signed and they will be able to decrypt that email. So it can't be read in transit, it can only be read by the person sending the email and the person receiving the email. Um, digital document signing with HSM. So here we depict um, how that works. So a user will proceed to log into their application. Um, they'll submit a signature request and their request will be sent to our cloud IAM solution being IDAS for single sign-on. They will go to um, sign the, the request. Um, they'll be told to authorize that request via their mobile smart credential application with their face ID. Um, an optional step will incorporate a HSM to secure um, the protect the keys, which will help um, bring an end-to-end -end trusted transaction. The request will be signed. The signed document will be sent back by the application to the user, and the user can use that signed document. So we can truly offer a full end-to-end um, -end trusted authentication solution. And to finish up, we'll just go through a couple industry use cases. Um, the first of three use cases are targeted towards healthcare workers. So we mentioned the NHS previously. Um, for healthcare, we must first establish the need. So whilst the need for maintaining hygiene has always been present, it's never been more in the spotlight due to COVID-19 capturing the world's attention every single day. Um, we can eliminate physical authenticators on shared workstations. Um, whilst at the same time we can improve customer um, user convenience and experience and save time. Um, as we saw on the previous slide, we can also leverage upon our digital document signing solution to be able to sign patient records and um, sign prescriptions. So how exactly does the solution work? Um, look so. So certificates via mobile smart credentials will be provisioned on the healthcare workers' phones. Anyone can log in via high assurance authentication simply by being proximity of their workstation. And they'll also be extended to provide single sign-on to all applications and portals. The second use case highlights our story in banking for consumers. In an ever-changing digital world, uh, consumers want and demand more flexibility to transact. And the traditional uh, brick and mortar presence of banks have evolved well and truly past this. Um, so we can cater for this demand via multiple solutions. So mobile first authentication solutions, including parcelless login, um, electronic know your consumer onboarding via mobile ID proofing, um, and strong high assurance non-repudiation um, bank transfers via transactional signing. And the final industry use case to go through today is enterprises as a whole. 
Um, so as touched on earlier, the remote workforce attack surface, it's been expanded as more and more are forced to work from home. So cyber criminals are actively targeting workforces due to this expanded act attack surface that is now not only predominantly in office, but is also extended to remote workers. Um, so how can we solve this? So we will issue a digital certificate onto each user's device. All these identities will be managed by a public key infrastructure system, ensuring that high assurance and non-repudiation, and we will enforce parcelless access, including single sign-on, which will ensure seamless connectivity to applications, desktops, and VPN solutions. Okay. Um, I will now um, like to open the floor to question and answers. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, so if anyone has any uh, questions, just place them in the uh, the question box and we'll uh, we'll get them uh, answered. Oh, look, well, well uh, some people are working on some questions there. So Nathan, is um, uh, Parcelless uh, from Entrust, uh, is it available as a you know, an MSP product or a termed license product? How can, um, you know, how can yep. people consume the, the product? Uh... Great question. Um, so it's offered in both, uh, both flavours, um, termed or MSP offering. Um, via the MSP offering, it is using our PK as a service, which is all built in the licensing subscription costs. Um, and you can get more price and information via reaching out to Blue Chip after this. Um, and our termed licensing can use any CA um, out there, um, out of box, Microsoft and Entrust. And another another question while we uh, people are still typing. Um, how do we? Uh, how does someone uh, get a get a demo of the actual, uh, you know, the technology underneath uh, yep. what you've been talking about today? Yep. So they would uh, go onto our website. Um, I can probably put the website in the link. I, sorry, I don't have it on the slide at the moment. Um, but basically, go onto our website. You fill in um, some details. Basically, ask for your email, name, and user ID that you want to use create an instance and you're up and running within 30 seconds to a minute. If they want to demo the password list, just reach out to um, anyone from Blue Chip and we'll facilitate to give them a demo of the password list offering as well. So you can not only demo the authentication, but also the password list. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so if you, you know, if anyone's uh, wanting to get some more information, uh, email anyone at Blue Chip or Ntrust. Uh, at bluechipit.com.au and that'll go straight to uh, uh, straight to us. Um, doesn't look like there's any uh, any questions coming through. Just people saying it's a great presentation, Nathan. So uh, that's uh, yeah. it's always always good. Um, let's get jump into a, a quick poll and um, let's look at what uh, what might be for lunch. Terrific. So are you going to drive the poll, Matt? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we've got three three questions here and um, you know. Today's webinar, there was a uh, lunch was was on us, uh, so everyone's going to receive after this presentation a uh, an Uber Eats gift voucher, or you can actually you can use it for anything else if you want to, but uh, you can uh, use it for uh, definitely want to do it for lunch. Um, but yeah, whoever answers the questions the fastest and most accurately, we're going to announce another prize to them at, after the presentation. So let's kick it off. So the uh, the first question is, what are the three types of passwordless solutions offered by Entrust? Um, we have a pool, FIDO, credential, push, soft token, credential, push, FIDO, credential, and push, uh, FIDO, soft token. All right, and. Uh, Fantastic there. So uh, yeah, the answer being uh, the push uh, FIDO uh, credential based. Uh, everyone's been listening. All right. So uh, the next question is going to be is, uh, another multiple choice. Uh, what is the passwordless solution offering the highest uh, assurance and increased productivity? A few 
few more seconds there. Uh, beautiful. So the uh, the answer to that one, uh, out of the the pass of the solutions, the credential based uh, is the one that uh, offers the uh, the highest assurance and the most increased productivity. So Nathan was talking about the uh, the you've, you've got a credential stored on your phone, effectively a virtual smart card, uh, and then you're presenting that uh, to uh, to, P to PCs and using that. Um, so it's giving you the most highest assurance because it's using certificates um, and because it's, you've got your phone and it's all Bluetooth and NFC, it's very, uh, very productive. All right, last question. Uh, what uh, third party certificate authority does Entrust Password Solutions work with out of the box? Right, beautiful. So the uh, the answer to that one is yeah the uh, the Microsoft Microsoft CA is the one that uh, works out of the box and uh, and of course Entrust uh, Certificate Authority uh, if uh, you go for that one. All right. Um, in the uh, in the chat uh, hand or in the uh, go to me webinar ha section, there is a handout um, spot, or you can actually download um, one of the uh, the latest presentation, one of the latest promotions that are being run. So there is a uh, sort of an Apple uh, giveaway. Uh, so for a period between May and October, uh, for a certain amount of uh, deal size or certain amount of MSP billing, um, you can win um, you know, Apple TVs, AirPods, and Apple Watches. Uh, so um, yeah, definitely uh, come and book a meeting, book a demo with us to to get some more info, uh, and then get rewarded at the uh, the end of uh, end of the the promotional period. Um, yeah, Nathan, just uh, if you can flick to the last slide, um, I think uh, you've got the Uber Eats voucher. So we'll uh, we'll kick this off uh, very shortly. So have a look in your inbox, your junk folder for an email from uh, Gift Pay, uh, and uh, it'll have your Uber Eats voucher there. Um, it is an e-voucher, so you can choose other things there. But um, you know, why not uh, have lunch, uh, especially if you're uh, you're uh, some Victorians uh, locked at home, um, spoil yourself. Um, so we'll kick those off and we'll send those out and we'll also announce the, uh, the winner of the, the, the poll um, after the session. Um, so um, Beautiful. Well, um, thanks everyone for, uh, for joining us. I uh, hope you learned something about passwordless uh, authentication. Um, yeah, please uh, reach out to us at entrust at bluechipit.com.au. Talk to your account managers as well. Uh, and we'll also be reaching out and, uh, and, and having you know, a chat to, uh, to everyone as we, uh, as we get around to uh, talking to everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, have every, everyone have a great day and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for facilitating this blue trip. Beautiful. Thanks, Nathan.